Namaste, yogis. Welcome. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, today's for today's practice, we're going to be needing two blankets and a strap, or you can have also your blocks available if you have at home. And um, take it easy. Listen to your knees, your hips. Really listen to your whole body, and whatever doesn't feel right, just stay away from it. Stay down, maybe on Shavasana or child's pose or any other pose that feels safe, that feels right. Breathe there until you want to join again. All right, we're going to start laying down on our backs, finding our Shavasana. And just adjusting the body. Remember that you can always tuck your tailbone to release your sacrum, shoulder blades together and down, ribcage, make a point to get them down onto the floor, hands by your sides, palms up, relax your fingers, relax your face, and check in with your breath. Notice what feels right. If there is any adjustment you want to do, maybe on your head, move it side to side so that your neck feels relaxed. And relax your toes and foot soles. And relax the top of your feet. Relax your ankles. Relax your lower legs. Relax your knees. Relax your thighs. Relax your buttocks. Notice your hips. Let them be heavy. Relax your back, lower back, mid back, upper back. Soften your neck. If your head, you feel your head is falling back, remember you can always adjust by placing your hands behind your neck and slightly tucking your chin just a little bit. You can also place a blanket under the neck, just a, just a, thin roll under the neck to keep the natural curvature of your neck. Relax your arms, your fingers, let them curl naturally into your palms. Feel the weight of your shoulders as you exhale. Soften your face, your jaw. And then watch your breath. Notice how is that you're breathing this morning. Rising and falling. And maybe you unlock your Dirga Pranayama, allowing your breath a little farther down in your body when you breathe in. Following the breath out, making sure you release it completely. Feel the risings and fallings of your breath. Begin sending your breath into your back body as well. From bottom to top as you inhale. Let the air go from top to bottom. Rising as you breathe in. Falling as you breathe out. Rising.
falling. Rising. Falling. Take a few more breaths like this. Don't let your mind wander. Send your breath and awareness down to your feet on your next inhalation. Wiggle your toes. Then wiggle your fingers. Move your feet and hands, maybe in circular motion both ways, or side to side, whatever feels right. And then stretch your arms overhead and tense every muscle from toes to fist. Tight, 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 tight. Prune face. Exhale, release. Again, inhale, deeply stretch and tense every muscle tight, tight, tight. And release. Last one, make it count. Inhale, deeply stretch and tense. Point or flex your feet. And exhale, let all tension go. When you're ready, bend your knees, bring your foot soles on the floor, tuck your tailbone, swing your knees side to side a few times, just so that. You feel that nice stretch through your sides, through your hips. And when you are ready, bring yourself back to center and maybe hug your knees and rock side to side. Breathing deeply, relaxing your face, maybe keeping your eyes closed if you can follow the instructions. If not, that's okay. You can open your eyes and take a look. I'm just trying to really focus on the breath. Come back to center and have your knees 90 degree angle. Bring your arms out to the sides at a deep position. Draw your navel in, pulling your back onto the floor. Watch for the neck. And we're going to start doing knee rolls. So towards the right, 10 knee rolls, tiny, as tiny as you want. And maybe you start getting them a little bit uh, wider. Four. Five. Five more. And hug your knees when you finish with your rounds. Press yourself against the floor, maybe rock side to side. Make a point of keeping your back pressing onto the floor. You will find that your pelvis tilt a little bit, but that effort that you put against the floor, that will engage your stabilizers. So draw your blades together again, pull them down, arms to the sides. If you need extra grip, palms facing down, that's okay. And now we're gonna do circles on the opposite direction. Start with a small circles, we'll do five. And five more, maybe bigger. And return to center, hug your knees, press your back onto the floor, feel the release, feel your breath. Notice your heart, let it slow down. Awesome, now when you are ready, bring your legs again at a 90 degree angle, arms by your sides. And as you inhale, bring your legs wide apart. And as you exhale, extend your legs forward, let them meet and bring them back to center. Frogs, 10 of those, so nine more on your own. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale.
hug your knees, press yourself onto the floor, watch your breath. Use your arm muscles to push your thighs against your tummy, and unless it hurts, of course, then soften. Breathe against the tummy, allow your belly to expand as much as you can without putting pressure on your eyes. Exhale, let all the air go. Inhale, expand. Exhale, let go. One more breath, inhale. And exhale. Bring your arms out to the sides. Last one, we do it backwards. So on your next inhalation, extend your legs and on the exhale, circle your legs back to center. Nine more. If that is clicking on your hips, don't go too wide. Hug your knees, press yourself against the floor, observe. And when you're ready, release your feet on the floor, walk your knees, mat with apart, maybe wider, and let your knees rock side to side. Keep connecting with your breath. Awesome. And when you're ready, come back to center. Now, heel to your feet together. Move on to your favorite side and take a few moments here. Close your eyes, observe your breath. Use your top hand to slowly help yourself up on your next exhalation. And we're gonna take one of the blankets and place it under the knees. We're going towards the back of the mat. And just try to make sure there's no wrinkles not, speak, not because I am being picky, but otherwise it digs on the knees. About fist or fist and a half distance between the knees. Bring your arms wide apart so they are under the shoulders. They can go slightly wider. Just don't bring them too close together. Spread your fingers wide. If you feel like going into a big hinge, try to draw your navel in so that your spine is more neutral. Press the top of the feet on the floor and inhale, tailbone rise, belly drops, blades together. Look to the top of the mat, forward or up. As you exhale, tuck your tailbone, round your back, navel in, head down. Inhale, tailbone, belly softens, blades together, gaze forward or up. Exhale, tuck your tailbone, navel in, let all the air go, head down. Inhale. Exhale. The slower you breathe and move, the better. It's okay if your body and your breath don't want to slow down. Do what it feels right for you. One more round, inhale. And exhale. We return to tabletop on the inhalation. Remember you draw the navel in to keep your spine neutral. On your next inhalation, extend your right leg back and bring it up. Take a few moments, balance your hips. Breathe deeply here. Now, it is your choice if you want to bring the opposite hand forward. You can make cupcake hands or a hand or bring your arm forward and breathe. Micro bend the right arm, the right elbow. 
Inhale here, without rounding your back. As you exhale, bring your knee in, bring your elbow in. Some of you may touch, some of you won't. Inhale, extend. Exhale. Three more. Inhale. Exhale. Two more. Last one. Inhale, extend. Hold and breathe. Next time you inhale, bring your hand down. Exhale, knee down, adjust your weight. Uh, weight evenly, curl the toes under on both feet and stretch back. Watch for your knees. You don't have to go that far back. If you are comfortable here, rest your elbows on the floor. If you want to go a little deeper, stack your fist and press your forehead down. Watch your breath. One more breath. Inhale your hands on the floor and exhale, push yourself up. Walk to the top of the mat once again. Lift your feet, spread your toes, wiggle them and curl them. Spread them, wiggle them and then curl them. And one more time, spread them and wiggle and then curl them. And then tap. Perfect. Find that tabletop that works for your back, draw the navel in, extend your left leg back. Now from here, maybe leg goes up, try not to sink onto your right hip and bring the opposite hand forward, maybe keep it on the floor or maybe lift. Micro bend the standing elbow, breathe deeply, shoulder into its socket. Keep drawing the navel in, inhale here. And as you exhale, bend the elbow and knee. Inhale. Exhale. Three more. Inhale. Maybe flex the foot when you inhale. Maybe point it as you exhale. Two more. Last one. and inhale, extend, hold and breathe. Next time you inhale, bring your hand down, exhale, knee down, adjust your weight, curl the toes under, and push yourself back. Once again, find that place that works for you. Maybe stack your fists and press your forehead down. Breathe. Take one more breath here, full deep breath. Inhale slowly, hands on the floor, and exhale, push yourself up. Walk to the top of the mat, tabletop position, lift your feet, spread them, and maybe wiggle them, and then curl them. And spread wiggle and curl one more time spread and curl and tense and then curl them and then tap perfect now from where you are if it's okay for the knees you're gonna send your hips back don't have to go all the way back some of you will some of you won't that's okay now you don't have to touch the floor with your forehead but you may bring your forehead towards the ground as you inhale, come up onto a tabletop. Now you may watch. 
come up onto your tabletop and let your hands go further forward just a little bit. Now, as you exhale, top of the feet press down, tuck the tailbone, squeeze your bum, and lower, elbows in towards the body. Don't let your hips sink. Inhale, lift, micro bend the elbows here. Keep your hips where you had them. Gaze is forward or up. Draw your blades together here. Watch for your back. Don't let your back sink. The next time you exhale, push back onto your heels, forehead down. Breathe. We'll do it again. Inhale, hands slightly forward. Come up onto a longer tabletop. Squeeze your bum, and as you exhale, keep your spine elongated. Lower, bend your elbows in towards the body, just halfway. Inhale, lift. Exhale, push back onto your mecha pose, forehead down. We'll do three more. Inhale, table. Squeeze your bum, exhale, lower. Inhale, extend. Exhale, push back, forehead down. The knees stay on the floor. Inhale. Tuck your tailbone. Exhale. Inhale. Micro bend the elbows. Exhale. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale. Tuck the tailbone. Exhale. And try to hollow up your neck here and push your shoulder blades away from each other. Inhale, shoulder blades together. Extend your arms, gaze forward or up. Exhale, push back onto mecha pose. You may stack your fist. Breathe. Checking with your back. You can bring your knees apart, by the way. Bring your hands under the shoulders as you inhale. Exhale, push yourself up. Walk towards the top of the mat. So from tabletop position, breathe in here, curl the toes under. And as you exhale, pick up the knees, push back onto downward dog, lift your hips. Now once on your downward dog, adjust your arms so they, they can go wider if you want. You can point your fingertips out to the sides. Keep your knees bent, keep your toes lifted. Tailbone rises, chest towards the thighs. Relax your neck. Think about putting your shoulders into it, sockets. Remember, if this is not comfortable, you can always go on your knees. Rest your arms on the floor, your elbows on the floor, and extend your back. Drawing your ribcage in, engaging your shoulders, putting them into it, sockets. Or if you're comfortable on your downward dog, see here you can also do dolphin instead, so still here, but rest your elbows on the floor. One more breath. The next time you inhale, bring your knees onto the floor. And as you exhale, uncurl the toes and bring your right foot in between the hands. Now you don't have to go into a big, big step. Make sure this will feel good for your knees and hips. So you want that right knee right over the right heel. Press the back foot on the floor. You can curl the toes under if you are cramping. Squeeze your bum, and as you inhale, bring your arms out to the sides at a T position, and throw your shoulder blades together. Breathe. Just like we have been doing, you draw the navel in and pull it up. Engage your bum. Don't let your back go into um, an anterior tilt. Breathe deeply. You want to retract the blades. Think about hollowing up your armpits. Gaze can be up, forward, 
or slightly down. Whatever works for the neck. Two more breaths here. Inhale deeply, maybe arms back a little more. As you exhale, bring your left hand to your right shoulder and your right hand on your lower back. Palm faces away from the body. Lengthen through the spine, inhale. And as you exhale, with your right hand, push your shoulder back, rotate your torso, gaze towards the right. Breathe deeply. You may bring your gaze towards your right shoulder. You don't have to. On your next inhalation, maybe bring your right hand down, like if you were trying to touch the heel. Some of you may, but you don't have to. You may stay up here. Whatever works for your hip, for your back. Keep using your, right hand, uh, your left hand to push your shoulder back a little bit. Your, your right palm might face, in, face out to the side to open up your shoulder. Two more breaths. Inhale, bring your hand on your lower back. Exhale, come back to an upright and rotate your torso back to center. Inhale, out to the side, T position, gaze maybe up. Exhale, hands by your front foot, curl the toes under, pick up the knee and step back onto your downward dog, observe. One more breath, full deep breath. Inhale, knees down. And exhale, and curl the toes, step forward with your left foot. Once again, not a big step, unless your hips need a deeper stretch. Back foot is uh, pressing down onto the ground. Front foot is active, squeeze your bum. Inhale, come up at a T position. And once again, adjust your pelvis, engage your blades, adjust your gaze forward, up or even down if you want. Two more breaths. The next time you inhale, open your arms a little more, blades together. And as you exhale, right hand to left shoulder, left hand onto your lower back. Take a few moments here, inhale. And as you exhale, rotate towards your left. Maybe use your right hand to open up your shoulder here. Breathe. Watch for the front knee, don't let it move in or out, keep it pointing straight ahead. Inhale deeply here and on your next exhalation, maybe your left hand goes back. So some of you might aim for the heel, you don't have to touch it, some of you will, but always checking that it's not pinching your back. Watch for your hips, for your glutes, make them active or make them work. Breathe. The next time you inhale, bring your hand onto your back. And as you exhale, with control, come back to center, lengthen through the spine here. 
Inhale, T position, blades together, maybe gaze up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Pick up the knee and stretch back. Hips to the sky, chest to the thighs, breathe deeply. Think about moving your shoulder blades away from each other. Push your shoulders down and relax your neck, relax your head. You can bend your knees as much as needed. Two more breaths. Next time you inhale, knees down. And as you exhale, uncurl the toes and bring your left foot between the hands. Now once again, adjust your foot so it lands right below the knee. Your heel is right below the knee. Our back foot is flat on the mat, unless, remember, it's cramping and you can curl the toes under or you need that extra for balance. And that's fine. Now, as you take your next inhalation, come back out at a T position, shoulders back and down. Once again, engage your buttocks. Keep your hips square to the short end of the mat. Breathe. You can bend the elbows if this doesn't work. Next time you exhale, side bend to your right. Left hand towards the floor. If this doesn't work for your shoulder, bring your hand on your lower back. Your fingertips are almost touching the floor. Even if you're super flexible, don't go right into it. Just stay engaged the whole time. Inhale, reach up towards the sky. And exhale, pull yourself up with a rope. T position. Breathe deeply here. Inhale, stretch your arms back, maybe gaze up. Downward dog as you exhale. Remember, if this is too much, if this is uncomfortable, knees down, elbows down, and breathe here. So this is a perfect good option. Instead of going on to downward dog, you can stay in tabletop and do some cat cows to work through your spine. So make sure that you stay with whatever works. If you have problems with your hands or wrists, resting yourself on your elbows is a good idea whether you stay on your knees or not. High blood pressure, you might not wanna stay in downward dog for too long. Stay away from any pressure on your eyes and temples. If you're comfortable here, keep shifting your hips up, keep pushing your shoulders away, um, your shoulder blades away from each other, opening through the shoulders, eyes of the elbows face forward, hollow up your armpits. Inhale deeply here. And as you exhale, bring your knees down onto the floor. Adjust your back, inhale, exhale, right knee forward and you want to make sure once again that you adjust that knee over the heel squeeze your bum inhale out to the sides your arms to t position blades together engage your glutes draw the navel in When you're ready on your next exhalation, side bend towards your left. And just allow your fingertips to go towards the floor. They don't have to touch, by the way. And right hand goes up.
Do remember that if this is too much for your uh, shoulder, bring your right hand on your lower back, palm away, continue to open up through that shoulder so you're not collapsing towards the floor. Front foot is active the whole time. Reach up with your right hand as you inhale. Imagine there is a rope, and as you exhale, pull yourself up with that rope T position. Breathe. Adjust your gaze so your neck is comfortable. Next time you inhale, maybe arms reach back. Exhale to downward facing dog or any version you are doing today. And stretch. Inhale, knees down. Exhale, big toes touch, um, knees out to the sides, and sit back on your heels. You can put another blanket under your heels, or you don't have to go all the way down. Maybe rest your forehead on the floor, or maybe stack your fist. Your choice. Breathe. You can also stack your hands extended and rest your forehead. If you go all the way down, forehead on the floor, and then you find that it's hard to breathe, you can start sending the breath into your back body. And if that's not enough, you may lift your chest and put some props under your forehead. It can be a blanket and then stack your hands there. We're going to take three more breaths here. Next time you inhale, bring your hands under the shoulders, and as you exhale, slowly push yourself up. Bring your knees together, curl the toes under, and maybe shift your weight back. You may have your blanket out of the way for now. Stack your shoulders over the hips, draw your navel in, and bring your hands together at the center of the heart. The next time you inhale, bring your hands down by your feet. Exhale, extend your legs. Don't have to go fully extended. And once here, have your fist in between your feet, in between your toes, heels a little wider apart. And lift the toes, bend your knees as much as needed. Come halfway first. And so some of us might actually will have to take the flesh out of the way. So for that, you take your hands on the creases of the legs. Pull your tummy up and then rest down, release down again. Let your head dangle. Maybe hold onto the elbows. If that puts too much pressure on your back, then hold yourself higher. Or hands on the shins or hands on the thighs. See if you can relax the neck here. Let your shoulders round forward, your upper back round. Bring your hands on your thighs, squeeze your glutes, inhale halfway. And on your next exhalation, slowly and with control, walk your hands up the legs. Shoulders back and down, find your Tadasana. Lift the toes, squeeze your bum, close your eyes. Now in your Tadasana, we measure our feet before coming up to standing, but you can look down and check if your feet are still there. Many uh, times 
when we move, then our feet go into that place that is uh, our habit. So sometimes your toes are going to flare again. So try to keep them pointing forward. Engage your bum, draw your navel in, pull it up, lift the pelvic floor muscles, lock in the first banda, mula banda. And slightly tuck your chin. See if you can send your weight to your heels. And inhale, open your eyes, relax, and walk it out. You may get some water. You can stay at the back of the mat. I'm just going to face you so that you can watch. And so once you're ready, you're going to lift your feet and allow your feet just to land anywhere that feels right. Then bend your knees. Make sure your knees and your toes point on the same direction. When you're ready, send the weight to your left foot and bring your right knee up. Now, externally rotate your hip by bringing your futsal to face the left. Your knee rotates out. Bring your hands into Gyan Mudra, thumb index touch, and keep your elbows in line with your shoulders, shoulder blades together. Rotate your torso towards your right and breathe. The standing knee can be bent. You can stay still, or you can play your flute. Krishna playing the flute, your choice. Maybe smile, maybe sing, maybe whistle. <laughs> Or maybe not. All right, I'm not good whistling, so breathe deeply here. The next time you inhale, come back to center with your torso, knee up, and exhale, release, walk it out, and shake the tension off. We're going to do the other side, so walk your feet. Bend your knees, make sure toes and knees point on the same direction, and send the weight to your right foot. Left knee lift, flex your foot, and externally rotate. Yan mudra, elbows to the level of the shoulders, rotate to the left, breathe. Remember, if you're gonna do playing your flute, you're gonna do that uh, dancing. Don't let the elbows drop. Keep them shoulder height if you can, but keep your shoulders down. One more breath, full deep breath. And as you inhale slowly and with control, come back to center knee up and exhale, release down and shake the tension up. Awesome. Still on the back of the mat. This time you do find Tavasana. If you want, you can have your blanket and fold it. Fold it like if you had a block, so as much as you want, so that you have like about four inches and have that in between your knees. Make sure that your toes and your knees are at the same distance. So it will be a little wider than normal, that's okay. Lift the toes, squeeze your bum. Before we go into the pose, you wanna make sure your pelvis is neutral. So remember your pubic bone, your hip bones are at the same level. Notice what type of arch you have on your back and you, when you go into the pose, that's what you wanna keep. So then you know you, you, your back is, in, is still in uh, neutral position. All right, shoulders back and down, reach your hands up. If this is too much for your uh, shoulders, keep your hands forward, palms my face, it, face up. Next time you exhale, sit on your chair. And notice, like once I go into my chair, I have a hinge on my back, so my back wants to do that. If you do too, remember, engage your bum, lift the pelvic floor, draw the navel in. Once you engage Udhyana Banda, the second lock, and you pull the navel in and pull it up, it's gonna keep your back protected. Engage your bum, find the arm position that works for you, and then sit on your chair. You don't have to go too low on your chair. You wanna make sure your shoulders stay down. 
Krishna holding the mountain. Keep your toes lifted. Maybe your gaze goes up. This version of Utkatasana might be too much for your shoulders, maybe for your wrist if your palms are facing straight up, and for your neck. So do adjust your neck, do adjust your back. Your knees, if you don't have a blanket, don't let them collapse at the center. Your glutes are active. One more breath. This fierce pose. Next time you exhale, press your heels down, extend your legs, reach up, and hands to heart center. Close your eyes, watch your breath, notice your heartbeat. Awesome. You may open your eyes. You can take your blanket out of the way. When you take your next exhalation with control, bend your knees a lot, hands on the floor, and just like we went up, we come down, rest your knees on the ground, walk towards the front of the mat, lower, and rest the top of the feet on the floor, forehead down, hands by your sides, palms up, breathe. Feet are parallel. Now lift right leg, push your toes away from you, and release. Left leg lift, and push, and release. Awesome. Now when you inhale, circle your left arm all the way up. And lift the right leg. Gaze is on the floor, but you lift your head and your chest. Exhale, lower. Circle your arm back down. Palm face up again. I said up? I think so, eh? Palms up. <laughs> Other side. Inhale. Circle your right arm. Left leg. Lift. Gaze is down still. Shoulders into its sockets. And when you exhale, release. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Continue alternating. One more on each side. We started with the left arm and right leg. So we finish with the right arm and left leg. Round your shoulders, gaze to the right, bend your knees, and let your feet flare. Observe. If this is too much for your neck, keep your chin or forehead at the center. One more breath. Bring your forehead down, feet together, and then down. We're going to do both sides at the same time. So as you inhale, circle your arms, palms face down, and externally rotate, lift legs and arms, shoulders into its sockets, gaze somewhere at the top of the mat, exhale lower. Inhale. Three more. Last one and maybe hold. And if this is too much for your arms, you can bring them at your sides. You can bring them 
by your hips, palms down. Just play around with the position so it's not pinching on your shoulders. One more breath, inhale. Exhale, lower. Palms face up. Bend your knees, bring your feet out to the sides. Gaze to the left, breathe. One more breath. Inhale your forehead back down. Exhale, feet together and down, hands under the shoulders. Lengthen through the spine, inhale. Exhale, push back on your knees and sit back on your heels, forehead down or stack your fist or hands, breathe. We keep the knees together to the best of our ability here. Round your back. You may move your body side to side. And then breathe at the center. Bring your hands under the shoulders as you inhale and push yourself up as you exhale. Shoulders back and down. Take a few moments here. Observe your breath. If this is not comfortable sitting on your heels, sit back cross-legged or sit on your props if you want. And when you're ready, Open your eyes from where you are. We're going to find ourselves uh, on to the next pose, which is Dandasana. I highly recommend that you have one of your blankets and fold it to get a nice support under your, head, your hips. And you also want to have your strap handy or a scarf and the other blanket. Some of us will need it. All right, so we're going to go on to our seated position. I'm going to come this way. There we go and sit on your blanket right at the top and then move your body down so that you can allow your shoulders to stack over the hips, but you want to make sure that you're not tucking your tailbone. So really the blanket is there to help us still the pelvis. Perfect, now the other blanket is so that if you like me, find this one hard for your back or your hamstrings, you're going to make a noodle with the other blanket and place it under the knees. And this will soften and you can stay here, maybe flex your feet, draw the navel in, pull it up and bring your hands by your sides. Some of you will touch the floor, some of you won't. You can go into cupcake hands and you can bring your fingertips away from you towards the back. Breathe deeply here. Spread your toes if that works for you. And on your next breath, with control, bend your right knee, bring it in. And as you exhale, move it out to the side. Left leg is extended. You may take your strap and place it on the ball of the left foot. Give yourself enough length with the strap so that you're not hinging too far forward. Activate both feet and you press a right foot against the left inner thigh. Spread your toes maybe. And the next time you exhale, hinge forward just a little bit. Keep the, keep the elongation of your back and your neck. Don't let your head collapse. Gaze maybe is at your toes. If you're quite flexible and you are um, able to bring your rib cage towards your thigh, you're welcome to do that. But don't do it at the expense of your back because there's no goal of touching really. It's about keeping the elongation of your body. One 
one more breath, full deep breath. And as you inhale, slowly come up. And exhale, put your blanket aside, bring that knee up, extend. And back to Dandasana for a few moments, breathe. On your next breath, bend your left knee, bring it in, and then bring your knee out. Readjust on your blanket if you need to. Flex that foot, activate both feet, press your body down. Take your strap, place it on the ball of the right foot. Lengthen through the spine, inhale. And exhale, hinge forward, elbows in towards the body. Each side will give you probably different range of motion. It's normal, it's okay. Stick with what works for you. We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. With control, as you inhale, come back up. And exhale, put your strap to the side, extend your legs, and shake it. Awesome. Other leg. So if you have knee concerns, we're going to repeat and bend your uh, right knee and bring it out to the side, futsal in. If there is no knee concerns and you want to try something else, then we may bend the knee and bring the foot sole, uh, the foot towards the glute for half hero pose or Ardha Virasana. For your blanket, because once we are here, we're going to be leaning towards the left. So you want to have the blanket folded thick so you can place it under that left glute. Remember, if this is not an option, go on the first pose that we did and stay there. You can tuck your foot. Make sure this is not putting any pressure on your knee. It's important. Balance your hips to the best of your ability. You can let your foot go out to the side if your knee don't complain. Lengthen through the spine, half virasana, Ardha virasana, or half hero pose. Breathe deeply. You can go on to Hakini Mudra if you wish. So fingertips together, rest your hands on your lap. Stack your shoulders over hips. Close your eyes and breathe. We are still doing Hatha Yoga. So that means that you are active. You're spreading your toes wide and you're pushing your toes towards you. The next time you inhale, open your eyes, and as you exhale, maybe walk your hands towards the back of the mat. Maybe readjust if needed. Watch for that knee and that foot. And lean back. You can go onto a shoulder dip and maybe gaze up. Now, some of you may rest the elbows on the floor. Some of you might rest the, ha the back on the floor. I won't do it, but you may. But make sure that that front knee is not putting pressure. Watch it, please. This is an intense stretch. And if this is too much, you can always stay back here in Virasana, or you can bring your knee out in um, uh, Janushir Sasana instead. All right? So once you found the stretch, breathe deeply. Your fingertips point away from you, and then go on to your shoulder dip. Maybe gaze up if it's fine for your neck. One more breath. Inhale with control, tuck your chin, and exhale, walk yourself up. Now to come out, lean towards your left, 
and be mindful, bring your knee up and extend your leg forward, shake the tension off, awesome. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side, so pass your blanket to the other side and bend your left knee, bring your foot in any position that will work for you. Sit, put your uh, right glute on the blanket to balance your pelvis. Right foot still active, take your time to adjust that left leg, lengthen through the spine, shoulders back and down, active foot. Hakini mudra maybe, close your eyes and breathe. With control, on your next inhalation, open your eyes, bring your hands behind you, maybe fingertips away from you, draw your blades together, maybe go onto your shoulder dip, maybe gaze slightly up, maybe let your head relax, but you do want your shoulder blades retracted so towards each other to support your neck if you're going back. Make sure it's not pinching your neck, it's important, and if you want, you can go onto your elbows or you can go farther down. Watch for that knee, it's, it's in a very vulnerable place and you need to take care of it. And if that doesn't feel right, please go on to have Janusir Sasana and make it into a reclined version. So remember, foot sole against your inner thigh. So this recline half hero pose or supta ardha virasana pose can really help you to stretch your quads. It's a gentle, well, depending how far you go, it's back bend. Your shoulders are engaged, although you are um, going into a dip, your blades are engaged, so your shoulder girdle is nice and new, um, supported. The next time you inhale, dock your chin. And as you exhale, with control, walk yourself forward, shoulders back and down, lean to your right, bring your knee up, and then extend your leg forward. You can take your blankets out of the way for now, shake the tension, move side to side, watch for your feet. Next one, so full virasana or hero pose. Now, if um, Virasana is not an option for you, we're gonna go into Badakonasana. So I'll show you Badakonasana first. So foot soles together, knees flare. So from where you are, where, bring your foot soles to touch, let your knees flare, and we go on to the same version. It's almost like we're going into Supta Badakonasana, but not all the way to the floor. So you stay up here, you draw your blades together, send your collarbone up, and then maybe your head goes up. So that's the version you're gonna be doing, or you can go onto your elbows, you can go onto Adi Mudra, your thumbs in, draw your shoulder blades together, keep your feet active, and maybe this goes back, maybe up, maybe still tuck your chin. If you wanna do Virasana, you're gonna have your blanket under your knees, And another option that I offer you today is to have the noodle you have under the knees and place it under your feet, under your ankles. Make sure that your blanket is even so that you are not lifted, uh, tilted to one side if you're doing the blanket. All right, so you can bring your feet closer together. If it's okay for the knees, you can bring your feet apart. So there is no perfect pose. It's all about making sure that your knees are protected. So it is, if it's fine for you to bring your feet out to the side and to sit in between your feet, you may do that. Keep your knees pointing forward if they wanna flare, as long as it doesn't pinch, let it be. All right, 
Shoulders back and down, draw your navel in, pull it up. Hakini Mudra, Virasana, breathe. By the way, those of you who are in, Supta, in Baddha Konasana, butterfly position, stay upright for now with us, with your, um, with your mudra. Engage your pandas, lift the pelvic floor, draw the navel in, pull it up, and still breathe deeply. Now when you are ready, open your eyes and then maybe bring your hands behind you. And you can go onto your shoulder lift, um, dip, or push the mat away from you, lift the collarbone, gaze maybe goes up. And so pay attention to what feels right for your shoulders and neck. You have a few options here. Those of you who want to go lower onto your elbows and go here, you're welcome to do that. Make sure this is not bothering your lower back or your ankles or your knees or your hips. These are intense stretches, so please watch it. I'll stay up here, fingertips away. Breathe deeply. And if this is not okay, you can stay upright the whole time. One more breath, full deep breath. Inhale, tuck your chin. Exhale, help yourself up. And if you are all the way down, help yourself. And maybe bring your knees closer together. Sit back and stack your fist, forehead onto the uh, fist or floor. Breathe. Bring your hands under the shoulders as you breathe in and push yourself up as you breathe out. We're gonna go on to our seated position. So those of you who were on butterfly position, I hope you follow me through coming out of the pose. And um, we're gonna go on to that Sukhasana pose that works for you so you can cross your legs in any way. You can sit on your heels, you can bring yourself into half lotus pose, whatever works. Bring your hands um, close to your face, so I'll show you. We're gonna take the thumbs and close uh, the ears, the cartilage, gently. The index finger is gonna help us close the eye softly. Middle finger on top of the nose. Uh, ring finger on top of the lips and pinkies under the lips. So your shoulders are gonna try to rise, so don't let them keep the awareness on the shoulders. And as you inhale through your nostrils, expand your body. Exhale, close your cartilage and hum. Mm. Inhale, hum. Mm -hmm. Inhale, close and hum. Mm -hmm. Three more breaths. Last breath. Mm -hmm. 
Release your hands, relax your shoulders, observe. Go on to Hakini Mudra, watch your breath. Brahmari Pranayama with Shanmukhi Mudra, the seal, six seal mudra. And just keeps that energy down as you hum and feel that vibration. It resonates through your whole being. Take one more breath, full deep breath. And when you are ready, you're gonna release your mudra, extend your legs, shake the tension off, maybe open your eyes and find your way onto your back. We're gonna lay down on our Shavasana. Bring your hands by your sides, palms facing up. Now, once you get here, go into your butterfly position and just have the most relaxing Suptava Konasana. Keep your arms in any position that feels right for you. Ball post posture feels good if you need to stretch across your chest, your armpits. Deep breaths. The next time you exhale, bring your knees up. And as you inhale, extend your legs, hands by your sides. If they were up, observe. Let your body fall heavily onto the ground. If you need more Shavasana time, you are welcome to pause the video and maybe finish up when you're ready so we can close our practice together. Otherwise, three more breaths. And on your next inhalation, wiggle your toes and fingers. Exhale, move your feet and hands. Inhale, stretch your arms overhead and tense every muscle and squeeze. Exhale, release. Again, inhale, deeply stretch and tense, tight, tight, tight. Exhale, release. Last one, make it count, breathe in. Put all tensions and stresses into the hands. Squeeze every corner of your body. Prune face. Exhale, release. And bend your knees. Bring your foot soles on the floor and move onto your side. Take a few moments once you get here. Watch your body. Relax your face, your jaw. Observe your breath for a few moments.
Use your top hand to help yourself up on your next exhalation. And meet me at a seated posture, any seated position that works for you. Balance your pelvis, throw your navel in, hands together at the center of the heart, relax your jaw, your face. Inhale deeply. Exhale. Inhale to Om. Relax your jaw, your face, rub your hands together. Mukula mudra on your eyes, blink your eyes open, breathe in, expand. Side out, inhale. Side out, last one, breathe in. Let all tension out and release your hands. Build up extra good vibes and shower yourself with those and shake off all tensions and stresses that you don't need. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.